Welcome to God's House, our weekly message for September 6, 2020. Jackie has read our lectionary text in her portion of our worship videos, and I hope that you have taken time to listen to them first. Let us pray. God of life, love, and freedom, as we gather to hear your word and your mighty deeds in history, we ask that your spirit take them and use them to speak to us today in our times and our contexts. Heal our hearts for love, mend our relationships for mutuality, and set us free to serve you faithfully. By these, empower our witness to your love to be true and effective as a church. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. These passages lead us to think about what it means to just trust the instructions. Moses is told by God to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh has said no multiple times. Let my people go, set them free to worship me, it keeps being repeated. But Pharaoh has no regard for God and no compassion for the people. There are consequences for not listening to God. And they're about to fall heavily on Egypt in this passage in Exodus, 3, Exodus 15. But God's promises and purposes for the people of faith will not be prevented from coming into being. So there's some very specific instructions for how to avoid that calamity was coming, given in this text in Exodus. This Passover meal would prefigure the table that we celebrate as Christians, where Jesus sets us free from sin and death. It's a table that unites us in the freedom of service in love for God. Now that we have instructions for our community, for how we're to live and relate to one another, we have them in Matthew 18, and we have them in Romans 13. We are called to be set free from bondage, from bondage to sin, to hate, to oppressive relationships. When we abide under the shelter of the blood of Jesus, we're prepared for the journey of faith that lies ahead in this life. This journey will not be as individuals. It will be as a community together. While our faith begins with a personal response to the gospel of God in Jesus Christ, it joins us into the body of Christ, the church. We are a mixed multitude. We shelter safely during the Passover and then get up and go out into the day. We're a very mixed multitude as we gather in the faith in Jesus. There will be much to learn together during our journey in life. There's much for us to learn in the chaos of passing through this world. God gives us instructions for our safety and wholeness. God gave the law at Sinai to teach neighborliness out of faithfulness and love for God. And the two passages from the New Testament today are also instructions for us in the church. Sometimes we just have to obey. But obedience is a sign of trust. Trust is what faith means. The instructions we are given train us in how to live together as God's people, as the body of Christ. So I'd like to look at Matthew 18 and Romans 13 a little closer from this perspective of community relationships and what freedom means. The first part of freedom is freedom from bondage. The part we sometimes fail to pay attention to is the freedom of what we are afraid to do or to be for. We like the part about being freed from our guilt, from all the things that have happened to us, from the shame we carry, but we're a little less keen on where our responsibilities are now that our lives are set in a new community of faith, our freedom to and for. You see, Paul puts it this way, we live in a world that is debt dependent. It ties people up in systems of exploitation, predatory lending on paychecks, regressive interest rates that charge those who can afford it the least the most, Advertising solicits our impulse spending for things we don't need and sometimes can't afford. Banks are considered too important to fail while families go homeless and hungry. Debt is used to manipulate people into doing things they don't want to do. 
The community God instructed Israel to make was one where debt forgiveness would happen on a regular cycle. There would not be wages withheld. The community of God would be present and it would show the compassion for the poor and the outcasts. The burden of debt would no longer exploit the people. Paul, trained as a Pharisee in the law, was keenly aware of these aspects of debt. But read with Matthew 18, his words take on an added meaning. Do not we also owe apologies and amends for harms we've done? We need to take care of those debts too. This is an instruction to clear our consciences, not just our debt records, to be free from indebtedness or sin against others. This requires humility, honesty, and courage. It requires letting go of pride and making our amends. We do this out of love. We do it because we care about our relationships. We do it because we want better relationships. We do it in the church because in Christ we are called to be united. On the other hand, the text in Matthew instructs believers who've been harmed in some way to go and speak with the one who did the harm, one-on-one, -on -one, without public embarrassment. If they don't listen, take someone else along before you actually take them before the public and embarrass them. We do this also out of love for one another. We do it because we care about our relationship that is broken. We do it because we want a better relationship for the future. We do it because in Christ we are one. The burden to be freed from this injustice is to be freed from injustice and resentment. But it will also require self-sacrifice and forgiveness on the part of the one who's been harmed. You see, no matter what we do, we must work through the problems of our relationship to a mutually agreeable solution and then implement it in our relationship. As Christians, we do this because God has done this for us in Jesus Christ. He came to us confronting our sins and calling us to a new relationship in love. In the Lord's Prayer, we remember the two sides of this when we say, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven others. When we clear our lives of the bondages of guilt and the debts of our offenses, we are free to live without fear of one another. We're free to live with love for one another, just as we've been freed in Christ to do lives out of love for God. The world and some in the church do not think this model is a very workable practice. But how stupid did putting some blood on your doorpost sound to the Israelites at the Passover? It was something new, something different but it was God's instructions. For this reason, at God's house, we trust this model for dealing with relational problems in the congregation. Some are not familiar with how to do it, and some really don't trust it to work or want to do it. But our instructions are, just do it. The results of practicing such love and trust and healing are that God reveals in us how mutual love is a witness to God's love in the world. God passes over our community with the power to reconcile and reunite our brokenness in our relationship with God and with one another. Therefore, when we say we owe no one anything, we have made our amends. Go make your apologies. Give freely forgiving and be reconciled. Because in this case, where two or three are gathered in Jesus' name with love for him and one another, there he will be among them because we are one in Christ and we will be the church united, freed to serve the God who has liberated us to live new lives in community with love. Amen.